हर खुशी के लिए काफी है को प्रेजेंटेड बाय कॉइन डी सी एक्स योर गेट वे टू क्रिप्टो Hello and welcome you're with us here on business today I'm Abha Bakaya here are the day's top stories The Wall Street bucks the global trend Sensex jumps over 400 points Nifty closes above 17650 financials and metal stocks surge in trade Brent oil jumps as oil producer group OPEC plus surprises energy markets will cut output for the first time in a year. The next OPEC plus meeting is scheduled for October 5th. Strong rally in the US dollar rattles currencies across the world. The rupee weakens to move closer to the 80 mark. Euro falls to lowest level against the dollar in two decades as Russia halts gas supply to the region. Liz Truss to become Britain's next prime minister defeats Rishi Sunak in Tory leadership race. She also elected as leader of Conservative Party. A day after Cyrus Mistry died in a road accident, RC Bhagava Marathi chairman and the grand old man of the auto sector tell Business Today TV that there's no substitute to rear passengers wearing seat belts. Calls for stricter implementation of rules. Cyrus Mistry, former Tata Sons chairman, died in a tragic car accident yesterday. The car he was traveling in was a complete wreck in the high-speed collision. with a divider in the middle of the road front seat occupant Darius and driver Anaita survived the crash but Cyrus Mistry and friend Jahangir who were in the rear seat were not that fortunate Mistry did not have his seat belt on the death of the billionaire in the crash has highlighted the importance of seat belts in fact according to a local circle survey 7 of the 10 Indians never wear a seat belt when traveling on the rear seat of a vehicle we spoke to top bosses of Maruti India and Audi India about the necessity for passengers in the rear seat listen in it the tragic accident of Cyrus Mistry i mean you know this brings to the fore all these issues of six airbags i know you're not a, exactly a critic but you've had your reservations about those kind of regulations and how much they will add to already inflated costs of cars uh, but do you think they will actually now make uh, the regulators even more uh, press ahead even more on uh, things like six airbags and such safety regulations you know if you look at the unfortunate uh, accident of mr cyrus uh, mystery he was in the safest of cars this car had six or maybe more airbags and uh, the people in the front survived the people at the back did not for the simple reason that apparently from what all recount show the people in the front had their seat belts on whereas people at the back did not have their seat belts on and i think uh, it's quite clear from this that what is the most important factor for safety is the need for people even in back seats to wear seat belts if they do not wear seat belts having the safest of cars and the most best of airbags as mercedes has there's no uh, uh, mercedes does not do anything which is not absolutely top class it still doesn't help they died on the spot the people in the front are in hospital hopefully they will recover soon hmm. so unfortunately you one, one maintain your position general, that uh, six I, airbags just, and all these things are not really essential no they are important but more important is to get people to keep their seat belts fastened all the time even in the back seat Unfortunately in India not even 5% of the people on the back seats put on their seat belts not even 5%. Now my point is that first please get people to start with using seat belts on the back seats. Till that time putting airbags is not going to make life uh, safer for them. 
we just recently saw a very bad incident from Mr. Cyrus Mistri happening. Uh, would you like to pay any uh, your condolences for that? And secondly, uh, how important is it for a rear seat belt to be plugged in? Because apparently that was uh, a contentious point in this case. So, any comment on how important it is for the road safety point of view, sir? Of course, uh, the, really the condolences because uh, he was a visionary, he was a stalwart of automotive industry and uh, you know he was very positive about India. So we lost somebody who could have done much more for India. That's the unfortunate part. Of course, safety always is our primary concern with our customers and we always urge our customers, whatever safety provisions that are provided in the cars, but at the end of the day, it is also partially responsibility when somebody who is sitting in the car that they are wearing the seat belts because primary safety comes from wearing the seat belts. We also spoke with Road and Transport Minister Nitin Gatkari on road safety. Here's what he had to say. This is going on that in October, these airbags, especially red seats, are you going to be compulsory in the country? Are you going to be increasing? Is it going to happen? Already it is in the process. We need approvals for it. Because this is the death of Cyrus Cyrus Mystery Ji. After that, this problem has come again and again. आ गया तो आप अभी उस दिशा में बढ़ना चाहते हैं आप कह रहे हैं देखिए इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड्स इंटरनेशनल सक्सेसफुल प्रैक्टिसेस रिगार्डिंग रोड सेफ्टी और जो कुछ स्टैंडर्ड्स है उसके बारे में हम कोई कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं करेंगे और हम लोग यही कहेंगे कि बिल्कुल हमको जान बचाना है लोगों की ये इम्पोर्टेंट है और एक बात बता दो आपको टोटल थ्री पॉइंट का नुकसान रोड एक्सीडेंट के कारण हो रहा है ये कितना बड़ा नुकसान है और तीन तीन लाख लोग हाथ पैर टूट जाता है बेचारे उनका लाइफ खराब हो जाता है वो कितना बड़ा नुकसान है कोई इंजीनियर है कोई डॉक्टर है किसी का यंग लड़का है आईआईटी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज का लड़का है उसके पैर टूट जाते हैं देखो ये कॉम्प्रोमाइज का विषय ही नहीं होता हमें लोगों की जान बचाना इज द हाइएस्ट प्रायोरिटी They may be the biggest shareholders in Tara Sons, but all has not been hunky-dory with the Shapurji Palonji Group, one of the oldest and largest construction companies in India. The group is highly leveraged, and the demise of Cyrus Mystery put the spotlight on the group once again. The Shapurji Palonji Group may be one of the oldest construction companies in India. But its big claim to fame is still the substantial stake its promoters have in India's largest industrial group, Tata Sons. Thanks to a white knight deal by Cyrus Mistry's grandfather, the Mistry family owns around 18.5% stake in Tata Sons, making it the largest shareholder in the sprawling Tata empire. According to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, Palunji Mystery had a net worth of $29 billion as of June this year. The enormous stake has, however, not saved Shapurji Palunji Group from debt troubles over the last few years. Troubles primarily driven by high debt in its real estate business. The group had a debt burden of a whopping 37,000 crore rupees in the beginning of financial year. 2021 to 2022. It has managed to reduce it to 23,500 crore in a year. The SP group had to sell some of its silver, including Eureka Forbes, for 3,100 crore rupees and Sterling and Wilson for 2,850 crore rupees. Reports suggest the group is also looking to sell a part or its complete stake in Afcon's infrastructure and other companies. Though the group is headed by his elder brother, Shapur Mistri now, the move to reduce the debt was led by Cyrus Mistri. And he was so successful that its ratings were recently upgraded to stable outlook. It now lies upon the surviving brother to steer the group. Meanwhile, Tata Motors paid its silent tribute to the former group chairman at its truck launch event in Mumbai. Meanwhile, there has been no public reaction from Ratan Tata on Cyrus Mistry's demise. Even the death of Palunji Mistry in June did not elicit a public response from Ratan Tata. Bureau Report, Business Today Television.
The Shahpurji Palonji Group is a 157-year-old conglomerate which Cyrus Mistry took charge of in 1994. This was just as India's economy was opening up to new challenges and the group took the lead in transforming the country's landscape and building some iconic structures across Asia and India. Let's take a look at some of these famous structures. Cyrus Mistri was just 26 years old when he took charge of his family business. The soft-spoken, humble Parsi took over as the managing director of Shaporji Palonji & Co. in 1994 and ended up transforming India's landscape. But he had some big shoes to fill. The Shaporji Palonji Group, founded in 1865, is the oldest privately held construction company in India and has built luxury hotels, stadiums, palaces and factories, including the tower wing of the iconic Taj Mahal Hotel in Mumbai. The Malabar Hill Reservoir in Mumbai, built in 1887. The Bombay Central Station building, built in 1930. The Mecca of Cricket in Mumbai, the Braben Stadium. The old building of Reserve Bank of India, as well as the new building 41 years later. The Breach Candy Hospital the Bank of India building in Mumbai, Mahatma Mandir, Dandi Kutir in Gandhinagar, the Obroi Towers on the Marine Drive in Mumbai and the Leelawati Hospital in Mumbai. The group also built the Qasar Al Alam Royal Palace in Muscat for the Omani Sultan in 1975. It was a tough act to follow for Cyrus Mistri and he did not disappoint. He left behind his own indelible legacy which include the NCPA building at the southern end of the Marine Drive in Mumbai, the Diamond Bors, the Max Hospital in Saket, Delhi, the DLFIT Park in Gurugram, the Imperial Towers in Mumbai, the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium, Delhi in 2010, the Lulu Shopping Mall in Kochi and the spectacular Jammu Dhampur Highway. These are among the many projects of the Shaporji Palonji Group. The company spread its wings into West Asia and Africa during tenure, ensuring the younger Mistri left his mark all around. Bureau Report, Business Today Television. India's IT city was marooned once again after the heavy spell of rain last evening. Several parts of the city were inundated due to severe water logging, with techies resorting to tractors for making it to offices, with torrential rainfall bringing the city to its knees. How much is it costing the tech giants? Here's a full report. Cars submerged in water. Massive water logging. Unending traffic bottlenecks. People wading through waist deep water. Hitching a ride from tractors to reach their offices. That's what Bengalurians had to endure on Monday. As torrential rains battered the Silicon Valley of India, the IT hub was brought to its knees. Majorly impacted on the outer ring road, which connects the city to the tech parks located on the outskirts of Bengaluru. IT officials and employees are taking tractor because they are unable to connect to the other side of the road because entire area is being flooded. You can see these are the IT companies on Yamluru and Belanduru road and they don't have any kind of connectivity because the entire area is being flooded. This is the second time in a week that the city was submerged after intense rainfall. On August 30th, Torrential rains had cost companies on Outer Ring Road a whopping 225 crore rupees. The Outer Ring Road Companies Association had blamed the poor infrastructure on this corridor for bringing down the efficiency and productivity of the companies. In the letter to Karnataka Chief Minister Basavaraj Bommai, the association highlighted that safety of employees was put at risk with many stuck on roads for five hours due to flooding. Due to the recent floods which happened uh, in front of EcoSpace, many companies had to face uh, 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 
a lot of issues and uh, challenges and had to undergo a lot of uh, uh, changes in their business uh, continuity plans and also announce work from home uh, for uh, uh, three, four days, which uh, resulted in several losses, which we also have mentioned in the letter submitted to the Honorable CM. On its part, the state government has pledged to address the immediate concerns. IT firms on the ORR generate revenue of $22 billion every year, accounting for 32% of Bengaluru's total IT revenue. As the citizens battle the vagaries of weather, the spotlight is back on Bengaluru's poor infrastructure. With vegetation and water bodies seeing a steep decline, will the government be able to maintain the balance between infrastructure growth and perils of climate change? Bureau Report, Business Today Television. Let's take a very quick break on that note. Back with more on the other side. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today, for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. Welcome back. Bucking the global market trend, benchmark indices continued their winning run for a second straight day, Sensex soaring nearly 500 points intraday before cooling off a bit to end at 59,246. The Nifty 2 climbed 126 points to settle at 17,666. Reliance and metal stocks uh, led the indices higher, but auto and FMCG stocks played spoil sport. Hindalco, JSW Steel, NTPC, ITC, Sun Pharma, some of the top gainers today. ITC continue to rise, hitting a five-year high. On the downside, Nestle, Bajaj Auto, Britannia, Ultratech Cement and Aisha Motors ended weak in a firm market. Despite a tepid global mood, Indian markets have been resilient on robust economic growth prospects. But will this run sustain or global headwinds come in the way of resilience? Udayan Mukherjee and I spoke to Hiren Ved, Director, CIO and CEO of Alchemy Capital Management. Here's an excerpt. You also must be very pleasantly surprised at the remarkable resilience of the Indian market relative to all other global markets. I mean, we almost don't seem to blink these days when the US markets fall for three or four sessions on the trot. Uh, do you think this is sustainable or is it in a sense making the Indian market vulnerable to future drawdowns in case the global route continues? So first of all, uh, hi Udyan and Abha, thanks for having me on the show. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's an incredible how resilient the Indian markets have been. And I think it's not about what we are seeing today. We've virtually thrown everything at this market for the last 12 months, right? Inflation, rising rates, the Ukraine war, supply chain dislocations, oil at $100 plus. And despite that, the markets are just 4 or 5% away from its all-time highs. So there are two ways to look at this, right? So either you look at data and then try to support a thesis of the market or you then look at price action and then decide what the market is doing and if you look at the price action what the price action is telling you is that this market is set for a very resilient and structural run I think once some of these geopolitical issues 
get sorted out or settled or are priced in, you may see a significant run up in this market. So Hiren, we take your point about the resilience, but my question is, do you see this global turbulence as the, or geopolitics as you mentioned, as the only headwind for this market now? Or would you also add valuations to that list of things which could come in the way of this continuing outperformance? No, Dian, in fact, uh, I'm quite surprised when people bring in valuations in the equation, right? I mean, if you really look at uh, the earnings in the last two years, uh, you know, in the COVID year, Nifty earnings was up, up about 18, 19%. And then in 21, 22, the earnings was up another 48, 49%. Now you could argue that, you know, a large part of the incremental earnings was because of commodity, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, stocks earnings going up, but earnings are earnings, right? And if you look at the just concluded first quarter numbers, right? I mean, despite a almost a 400, 500 basis point shave off on EBITDA margins, you've still had positive earnings growth in India. And, uh, you know, the, the, the nifty earnings have been cut by just 2 to 3%. So I think now the uh, FY24 nifty earnings is as about 995 or 1000, which means that we are roughly trading at about 18 times one year forward earnings. I think for a country which is now likely to see a secular growth in earnings and is placed fairly well uh, in terms of the growth cycle, I don't think paying 18 times one year forward earnings is going to be a big challenge. And look at the breadth of the earnings revision, right? I mean, unlike in 2018, 19 and 20, when earnings were very con consolidated in just a few top companies. I think what's changed this time is that a far wider set of sectors and companies is contributing to this earnings growth. So I think that I, I don't think the valuations are very expensive. Talking about uh, the structural growth story here in, uh, let's break that down a little further in terms of the other pockets where you find those opportunities and are they necessarily restricted uh, to stocks of a certain size or would you be looking across the market but for clear structural growth stories? So, Abha, I think, you know, again, in terms of the structural growth stories, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, we're very bullish on manufacturing, right? I think autos, uh, clearly, after a five years of very tough times, is coming out of the shadows. Uh, you know, specialty chemicals is in a structural growth story. Obviously, there was a high base effect and there are some raw material pricing issues. But on the whole, I don't see an issue in terms of these sectors growing at very healthy double digit rates. Defense is a big sunrise sector, right, uh, in manufacturing. And I think there we can clearly now see the uh, whole Atmanirbhar Bharat and the focus on getting domestic manufacturing kick started. Uh, uh, you know, we saw uh, uh, the, the recent uh, uh, carrier. Uh, being uh, inaugurated at the Cochin shipyard. We are seeing that more fighter aircraft are being manufactured in India at HAL. And I think that is going to spawn a whole ecosystem, just like when the auto industry uh, came to India, the Japanese mm -hmm. and the Koreans came, and there was a, it spawned a whole auto component industry. I think there is going to be a whole ecosystem of uh, you know, defense manufacturing that, that will do phenomenally well. So I think you know uh, it's going to it's going to be spread across several areas, uh, and you will see far more smaller companies which haven't done anything for years. I mean, like when was the last time that people were bullish on bearing <coughs> companies or tire companies in India? I mean, we had well forgotten to even hear about those stories, or even for that matter, textiles, which is coming out of the woodworks after 10 years, right? So we're seeing a breadth of sectors which are likely to do well now. And you can catch the full interview on businesstoday.in and our YouTube channel. We'll leave it on the show tonight. Thanks so much for watching.
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag.com. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. With every sunrise comes new beginnings, new opportunities and new stories. And that's why we're first up. While you're sleeping, we're hard at work to ensure you get the perfect news shot every morning. Get you all the updates. Our morning mission to get you news that's fresh and packed with flavor. Watch First Up every weekday morning with me, Akshita Nandagopal, right here on India Today. Co powered by the world comes together at Sharda University. Co powered by RK Marble, Khub Surat Imandari, in association with Dell, advice and expertise to help your business grow. Ecolink LED lights and fans. 